I found this idea to make a little junk journal online uh, on YouTube, and they were showing how you could take envelopes and tuck them into each other to make the pages of a, of a journal. I ended up using too many envelopes for this one, but I'm using mine as sort of a um, daily bread or scriptures that mean something to me. And you just create little pockets and things, and um, you save up little mementos and stuff. Like this is um, some tatting. I learned how to do tatting, and this was a practice piece that I didn't want to throw it away. I had it in a little box. But I get to enjoy it now because I have it on my, my journal and I learned how to make a little butterfly. So just little things that are treasures to you, you can add to uh, your journal. Little photos, there's all kinds of little pockets and things you can find the instructions for on YouTube. And um, I've really enjoyed doing this. I never really liked doing scrapbooks very much. I'm mostly in the fiber fabrics and things like that. But I've really enjoyed making this little book. And just these few pages, there's a lot of little places that I can add, um, you know, places to journal scriptures or whatever. But I needed envelopes to um, make this. And so I already had um, the Memory Keepers envelope maker, and it, it guides you through it. It gives you all the dimensions on what size to cut your paper and everything. And you can also use like a scoreboard like this that I've had for many years. I think this one is uh, Martha Stewart. But I've never really used it to make envelopes. But um, if you don't have any fancy tools, you can still make envelopes of any size. And so... Um, I came up with an easy way without having to do a lot of geometry. So I downloaded some graph paper at 8 lines per inch um, off of uh, www.printablepaper.net. And so this is going to really help to make your marks to uh, create your score lines. I've done several practice pieces, even a larger one, and I don't have it handy, but uh, you can do square cards, um, and you don't even have to have a card. You can just say, well, I want my treasure book pages to be a certain size, and you can use that as your reference. But it needs to be a little bit bigger than what card or, or whatever you're putting into the envelope. So I've pra these are a couple of them that I practiced this with, and it worked out fine. So um, first thing I'm going to do on my graph paper is make some markings, some guidelines to go by. Let me get some of this stuff. So I need a reference point at the top of the page, so I want to use this bold line here. And you don't really need to draw the diagonal, but it helps me to um, find the diagonal easier. So I'm just going to go corner to corner to corner. You can do it on any one of these, but I'm going to kind of move it about right here. So you can draw as many of these 45 degree angles that you need for different size envelopes. What I want to do ultimately, since I just figured this out, I want this piece of graph paper to only be for the uh, card that I'm making today. And so I'm going to write all my notes on here, what size to cut the paper, and what size card can be used with that envelope. And I'm going to make all those notes on this page uh, right here. Okay, so I'm going to use this 3.5 by 5. Like I said, it can be any size. Uh, I've tested it with the standard sizes, three or four of them, and they all worked out. So uh, hopefully um, it'll work for any size card. So you just measure um, from diagonal to diagonal to determine how big you want your paper to be. Let me put it where it can be seen here because my ruler is clear. So I'm coming up with six and an eighth. You want to you want to um, round up with easy numbers to do the math. There's not a whole lot of math on this, but I'm coming up with six and an eighth. So what I want to do is take that diagonal measurement, and I want to add 1.25 to it so that our envelope will end up a little bit bigger than the card itself. So mine was um, six and an eighth. 
So I need to, um, so I'm coming up with seven and three eighths for um, the size of the paper. So this is the square of paper that I'm going to cut, and it's always a square when you do this type of an envelope. So now I'm going to go and cut a piece of paper seven and three eighth inch square. All right, so I've got my paper cut, and so now here is where the graph paper comes in handy. So I'm just going to line up the top of my paper with my guideline that I drew across the top. And if you do this on a light box, you can really see the grid lines. And when I practiced this, I used white paper and I could see the grid lines. I'm going to be able to see them, but it's probably not going to show up on the camera but um, you, can, um, you can kind of see them through there. So what I want to do is take the card that I'm going to be using. You can start with either side, but I like to start with the short side. And I'm just going to slide it up along those 1 8 inch lines until both of my corners touch. And you want to choose just one of the... If you fall somewhere in between, just choose one of the 1 8 inch lines, the ones that it's closest to. So I'm coming up with this line here as my uh, reference point for um, to determine where I want to make that fold line. But I want to come down about 5 8 inch more. And the reason I'm coming down 5 8 inch more is because we had cut our paper 1.25 inches or 1 and a quarter inches bigger than the card. So I'm taking that and dividing it by two. The one and a quarter divided by two is, is five eighth. So I'm gonna move the card because I don't need it right now. And there's my mark. So I wanna come down five eighth from that. One, two, three, four, five. And there's my new line. So now I'm gonna put my paper back where it was. And I'm just gonna have to look for that underneath. Let me go ahead and draw. That way I can see it out on the other side. If I would have moved my diagonal line over more, it would have been a little bit easier. But my graph paper is only 8.5 by 11, so if you're doing bigger envelopes, you may need to glue several of these together. So that's my reference point for um, my first score line, which I'm going to call score line A. So I'm going to put my, my paper back in place. And then I'm going to lay my ruler, or some kind of a straight edge, across there and try to make it perfectly straight. And if you can see your grid lines through there, it's all the better. So that's going to be one of my A corners. So I need to come across to the other side and do the other corner exactly the same. So there's no math at, after this point, after you figure out your paper size. There's not very much math. I really wished I'd have moved my uh, line over. Let me go ahead and do that now. Because I, I feel like I'm not doing it straight. So you can put your 45 in several places. to help you out. Or you can just eyeball it, but my eyesight is not very good. All right, so let me choose one of these other lines. That's a lot better because now I can see this red line on both sides. So you're learning from my mistakes. And now I can get a better fold that I know is going to be straight. So these are my A corners. So that was the short side of my card. And I know you're probably guessing already what I'm fixing to do. I'm going to take the long side, line that up, and try to be as precise as you can with that. And I'm going to slide this up until the two edges touch. And then I'm going to choose the 1 8 inch line that closely matches that. So I'm just going to put a little dot. 
then I'm going to count five eighths inch down. One, two, three, four, five. And it's going to be right there. Let me draw this one in also because I'm going to save this graph paper for this size card and I'll always have my reference points to use over and over again for this size card. Okay, so this was my A and this is going to be my B. And then lay my straight edge across that line. Increase the paper. And repeat for the opposite corner. don't have to be this precise when you're making envelopes. You can just eyeball it and fold it, but I like to have something that can be repeated over and over again. Now where these lines cross, there's going to be a little triangle. So this is where they cross like that. And this is an erasable pen, so I'll be able to erase that and, um, and use this envelope for a project. But then you'll come in here with scissors if you don't have one of those corner punches or those envelope punches. And you'll just kind of round it. Don't make any sharp edges. You want to kind of round that right there. You don't want a sharp edge right there. So you'll do that to all four corners so that you don't have any bulk right there. And now we have an envelope that fits. And I'll usually whack off this, this little point also. I'll fold it down and then cut that off. And then you can also do something de decorative. You can round this with a punch if you have one. But I like these little scissors. I've had that probably for 20 years or so. I don't even know if they make them anymore. And you can do something cute like that. And then you can add some Distress ink. To your envelope. So I can now make a whole bunch of these envelopes for my little treasure book even if I don't have an envelope punch with me. 